Martin's Industry Light Ship, Georgia, in 1914. Stationed off Port Royal, this ship is typical of the older wooden hulled light vessels. Her smooth bilges did little to prevent rolling in heavy weather. The wharves at Staten Island Depot in 1912. Two light ships, one which is numbered 44, are tied up to the vessel at the dock in the left foreground. It is just possible to discern the foremast lantern hoisted part way up the mast of the left hand light ship. A light ship is moored to the dock at the right. The Nantucket Shoals, Massachusetts light ship in 1956. Part of the ship's bilge keel to lessen rolling is visible just below the lettering on the hull. Here a Coast Guard helicopter picks up a seriously ill seaman from a small boat, an example of the excellent physical access provided to the ship on one of the most exposed light ship stations in the world. Early light ships would have had to leave station under similar circumstances. Blunt's Reef Light Ship off Cape Mendocino, California. A typical modern light ship, her masts not only display her light, but bristle with sophisticated communications and meteorological devices. The Ambrose Light Ship surrenders her station off New York Harbor to make Texas Tower in 1967. The first outside light ship station off Sandy Hook in 1823 was replaced by Ambrose Channel Light Ship in 1908. Contrast the easy accessibility of the station via helicopter and electronic communications equipment with the almost complete isolation of most early light ships. The Boston Light Tower in 1966. This tower was erected in 1783 at the site of the first which had been blown up by the British in 1776. In 1859, the tower was raised to its present height of 89 feet. Here and at Cape Ann, Massachusetts, Winslow Lewis so successfully demonstrated his Argand lamp parabolic reflector system that the federal government adopted in 1812. The site of this light is the oldest still in use in the United States, and today its second order Fresno lens gives the light rated 2 million candle power. Beaver Tail Light Station Rhode Island in 1884. Although this tower was built in 1856-57, the station itself dates back to colonial times. Note the drawn shades inside the lantern, a standard practice in the 19th century to protect the lens against discoloration by the sun's rays. New London Harbor Light Station, Connecticut, about 1884. The keeper takes time out from his game of croquet to watch offshore activity. Sandy Hook Light Station, New Jersey, about 1890. This tower still stands and is today the oldest light tower in the United States. The Cape Henlopen, Delaware, the light tower, around 1925. Erosion slowly made it to the foundation of this historic colonial tower. Note that the lens had already been removed from this picture of the state. Nantucket Light, 1969. This light station was the first and only two lighted by any state of government after the United States declared its sweet lens and before the federal government assumed responsibilities for navigation lights.
Fresno lens. Montauk Point Light Station, New York in 1884. Built in 1797 on the east end of Long Island, this tower is today threatened by erosion. Note that the lens is scraped with a cloth cover, another precaution to protect the lens from being scratched and from the sun's. Gay Head Light Station on Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, about 1890. The squat appearance of this 47-foot tower tends to hide the fact that its light is 160 feet above the sea. The original Race Point Light Station, Cape Cod, Massachusetts, about the time of the Civil War. The old twin masonry towers of Chatham Light Station, Massachusetts, about 1884. Owl's Head Light Station at the entrance of Rockland Harbor, Maine. This light was established in 1825 under the superintendency of Stephen Pleasanton. The metrodome shaped structure on the point is a day mark. Dice Head Light Station, Maine, about 1900. The curtains are drawn in the lantern to protect the lens against discoloration by the sun. Stonington Harbor Lighthouse, in 1929, moved from its original site to the town of Stonington, Connecticut. This old structure is now preserved by a local historical society as a historic lighthouse. Institutional Gingerbread, Fort Tompkins Lighthouse, New York, about 1900. In 1903, the Lighthouse Board moved this light to Fort Wadsworth at Verrazano Narrows. The Twin Towers at Matinicus Rock, Maine, about 1890. Fire Island Light Station, New York, in 1898. The original tower was replaced by the present tower to the right in 1858. Mount Desert Island Light Station, Maine, as depicted in an 1839 engraving. A sketch of the first Minot's Ledge Lighthouse, Cohasset, Massachusetts, lighted 1850. Pilings were sunk five feet into the rock and were cemented in place. Approaching the Minot Sledge Lighthouse on a foul day around 1900, waves have overtopped this tower many times since its construction and still has held. St. Croix Rivers Lighthouse on Dashet Island, Maine, before the fire. During its active years, this lighthouse station occupied the number one position in the light list since its lighting in 1856 because of its proximity to the U.S.-Canada border. The metrodome-shaped structure held the fog bell. Dashet Island is now part of St. Croix National Monument. Charleston Light Station on Morris Island, South Carolina in 1885. This tower, because of erosion and earthquakes, stands a quarter of a mile offshore and is no longer in operation. Charleston Light Station, built on Sullivan's Island in 1962. This will probably be the last traditional light tower built by the United States. This tower the only one in the United States equipped with an elevator is surrounded by the most powerful light, 23 million candle power in the Western Hemisphere. Tybee Island Light Station, Georgia, in 1885. Construction and lighting of this tower took place sometimes prior to 1791. The tower was badly damaged by an earthquake in 1886.
Bald Head Light Station, North Carolina in 1893. Though no longer in service, the tower still stands and in time perhaps will become the centerpiece of a now proposed park at Cape Fear. The Cape Hatteras Tower in 1893. At 190 feet, this was probably the tallest light tower in the United States. Right rear, the site of the original tower, dynamited for safety reasons on completion of the newer tower. Sandy Point Lighthouse, Maryland, in 1885. This typical caisson-based structure is located in a Chesapeake Bay. Ice threatens the Love Point, Maryland Screw Pile Lighthouse on Chesapeake Bay in this rare photograph from 1902. A side wheel lighthouse tender stands by. Several lighthouses of this design were destroyed by ice and some were replaced by caisson lighthouse. Bodie Island Light Station, North Carolina. This tower, the third at this location, was laid in 1872. It displays a first order light visible for 19 miles. That is instrumental in helping southbound vessels to round Cape Hatteras without encountering the Gulf Stream. Point of Shoal Light, Virginia in 1885. This typical screw pile lighthouse was established in James River in 1855. Curry Took Beach Lighthouse on the Outer Banks of North Carolina in 1893. Lighted in 1875, this is the first order light that, like Bodie Island, is visible 19 miles and is essential in helping southbound coasting traffic to avoid the Gulf Stream. Key West Light Station, Florida, before 1887. Abandoned Dry Tortugas Light Tower atop Fort Jefferson in the Florida Keys, 1962. Fort Jefferson is now a national monument. The Screw Pile Tower at San Quito Light Station, Florida, about 1890. The action of the sea has caused this island to disappear and reappear several times since the station was established. In 1846, the island was washed away in a hurricane and the original stone lighthouse destroyed. The successor, shown here, has so far withstood the sea's onslaught. Mobile Point Lighthouse, established in 1822 near the subsequent location of Fort Morgan at the entrance to Mobile Bay. This tower underwent heavy shelling during the Union's fleet bombardment of the fort in 1864. Cat Island Light Station, Mississippi, around 1900. This screw pile lighthouse was completed in 1871. Shortly after this picture was taken, the tower was further stabilized by rocks piled under and around it. Chandler Light Station, Louisiana, after the storm in 1893 that did so much damage to the second tower built in 1856. A crew inspects the damage from a small boat to the right of the tower. In 1896, this brick tower was replaced by an iron skeleton structure. Arnassus Pass Light Station, Texas, established in 1855. The tower was seriously damaged in a Confederate attack and its top 20 feet had to be rebuilt. Note the heavy screen around the lantern, probably to ward off birds attracted by the light. The 
light tower atop fortification at Fort Point, San Francisco, California in 1969. Congress established Fort Point National Historic Site and as a part of the development of the site, the National Park Service plans to restore the lighthouse. Farallon Island Light Tower about the time of the Civil War. The structure in the foreground is a sleeping shanty for the keepers. Major Hartman, Box, Fog Signal, a locomotive whistle mounted over the natural blowhole was in use at this station 1859 to 1871. Point Pino's Lighthouse near Monterey, California is the oldest active lighthouse in, on the west coast. It withstood the earthquake of 1906 that destroyed San Francisco and its original third order lens, now electrified, is still in use. Cape Flattery Light Station in Washington in 1898 left the keepers and their families right the steam-powered fog signal. Abandoned Humboldt Bay Lighthouse, California around 1910. Erosion slowly ate away at this structure, which had been built in 1856 on a low spit of land and before too many more years passed, devoured the dwelling, then the tower. Point Conception Lighthouse, California, about 1955. This structure was replaced by a new tower at a slightly lower location in 1882. This section of California coast had the reputation as a graveyard of the Pacific, after a sketch by Major Hartman Bach. Cape Disappointment's First Order Light Tower, Washington, around 1855. For a short time, this point of land was known as Cape Hancock. Today, this tower displays a fourth order light, flashing red and white. A sketch by Major Hartman Bach. The Santa Barbara Lighthouse, California, about 1900. The woman on the porch is Mrs. John Williams, keeper from 1865 to 1905. An earthquake destroyed the lighthouse in 1925. The station now has a white tower whose light is visible 25 miles. The old Point Loma Lighthouse at San Diego, California. It was lighted in 1855 at 462 feet above sea level. The light was, for 36 years, the highest in the United States. So high, in fact, that it was often obscured by low clouds. It was replaced in 1891 by a light near sea level that could be more easily seen by the ships. The old structure now included with Cabrillo National Monument. It has been refurbished as of the late 19th century. Cape Argo Light Station at the entrance of Coos Bay, Oregon. This tower replaced the original tower in 1934. Its light is 100 feet above the sea. St. George Reef Light Station, California at low tide and during a storm. Because of its location, one of the most exposed on the Pacific coast, this lighthouse was 10 years in the building and cost $704,000. It sits on a rock only 300 feet in diameter, located 6 miles at sea. Presque Lighthouse at Erie, Pennsylvania in 1870. This was one of the first two United States light stations on the Great Lakes. Cleveland Light Station, Ohio, about 1890. The tower was originally lighted in 1829 and rebuilt in 1873, superseded by the beacon at Cleveland's East Pier in 1892. It no longer stands. One of the most prominent lights on the eastern shore of Lake Michigan is Big Sable Light Station, shown here in 1914. Rock of Ages Lighthouse in Lake Superior guards the western tip of Eel Royal. Its light, 117 feet above the lake, guides Duluth-bound shipping along Superior's north coast. The Standard Rock Lighthouse, erected in 1882. This tower is located in Lake Superior, some 23 miles from the nearest land. This 1954 picture 
a small boat from the Coast Guard cutter is approaching the tower to remove the keepers at the close of the navigations on the lakes for the winter. The light has been automated since 1961. Sentinel Light Station, Alaska in 1915. Lighted in 1902, this station exhibited one of the first U.S. constructed lights in Alaska. Cape Hinchinbrook Lighthouse, Alaska in 1912. This station was lighted in 1910 and rebuilt in 1934. Today it is one of Alaska's most important coast lights. It displays a third order light. Diamond Head Light Tower, Oahu, Hawaii in 1915. When the Lighthouse Board assumed control, Diamond Head was the only tower in Hawaii mounting a Fresnel lens. Landing supplies for Pau Ka'a Light Station at the entrance of Hilo Bay, Island of Hawaii in 1904. The station was displaying three small reflector lights when the Lighthouse Board took it over that year. Considering the forbidding rocks in the vicinity, contemporary mariners must have wished for a better light at this location. Lighthouse on El Moro, the old Spanish fortification that is part of San Juan National Historic Site, Puerto Rico. This tower, completed in 1908, replaced the one built by Spain that had been rendered useless by bombardment during the Spanish-American War. Culebrita Light Station, Puerto Rico, about 1910. Built by Spain in 1885, the light is 305 feet above the sea and today rated at 20,000 candle power. The fog cannon at Boston Light Station, the year 1700, is cut into the breech of the gun, indicating that this was probably the actual gun that was the first United States fog signal. This photograph was made in 1914. Foghorn with trumpet extension at Boston Light Station about 1890. This trumpet is even larger than Daboli's largest. This is a fourth order Frenzel lens incandescent oil vapor lamp. The stand on which the lens is sitting contains a clockwork system used to rotate the bullseye lenses to achieve a flashing effect. This lens has a smooth glass center belt was used at Fort Point around 1912. The Lamp Shop Force at the Staten Island Depot, New York, the main service and supply depot of the Lighthouse Service in 1890. District Lens Repair Shop in Buffalo, New York, 1901. Note the fixed Frenzel lens standing near the workbench at the back of the shop. On the center bench are wheels of which rotating lens rested and tuned, and also guts of the clockwise mechanism. Mrs. Mary Israel, the wife of Captain Robert D. Israel, longtime keeper at the Point Lomas Lighthouse in San Diego. Mrs. Israel served for three years as assistant keeper at her husband's light. Cleaning the illuminating apparatus aboard the Nantucket South Shoals Lightship in 1891. Pictures from Century Magazine. Interior of a dwelling of a Atlantic Coast lighthouse in the 1880s. Picture from St. Nicholas Magazine. Part of the interior of Point Lomas Lighthouse, California refurbished to look as it did around 1885. This section is the kitchen. Part of the interior of Point Lomas Lighthouse, California, refurbished to look as it did around 1885. This section is the bedroom. Captain David Splane, who served for some years as assistant keeper at several West Coast lighthouses. In 1894, he became the first keeper of the Ballast Point Lighthouse at the entrance of San Diego Harbor from the Grace Kill Killian Collection. 